fairly positive about it and um, we have a good record on and it's our local event so hopefully everything should come together for us on the day. I think we've actually won the championship now um, so it, which gives me the um, comfort to just go out and drive as hard as I can and give Eamon some trouble. At the nearest we got was last year where we finished second to Stephen Murphy so hopefully this year we'll go on better. The 25th anniversary of the Wexford Motor Club's event, being a round of the year's motoring news, Welsh Tarmac and South Eastern Stages Championships, has attracted a fabulous turnout of 129 crews. Local hero Eamon Boland and the new year's motoring news champion Pete Dowdy are the big attractions as the team set out on the nine Saturday stages. But Eamon realises right from the start that he's not going to have an easy time with the Nottingham man about. Doughty is nine seconds quicker than him on the first stage. It's nice to see Bob Fowden back on these shores after his big effant accident. And next up, it is the other Gwyndaff Evans. The Ford Works driver's namesake is in third position and engaged in an epic battle with Derek Smith. Gareth Lloyd, as the name suggests, is another Welsh visitor. He's in ninth place. David James may sound Welsh, but in fact he's a local from Gorey. Rallycross champion turned rally driver Dennis Biggerstaff is in the top ten. And he's finding things a little easier than Jersey visitor Michael Russell. And indeed his fellow escorteer William Carroll. Mark Sullaway is in third at the end of the first test, but sadly it's a short and happy visit to Wexford for the Clanbelly driver as he's broken a gearbox. We move on to the Adamstown test and Eamon Boland posts his first fastest time of the day and the 9.4 mile stage is taken three seconds out of Dowdy's lead. Evans remains in third place just ahead of Derek Smith's similar shaped Mark II. And Lancashire lad Lydon Barton is in bother, the Cosworth is overheating. Euros driver PJ McGrath is experiencing braking problems, but Gareth Lloyd is flying in his G3. As is David James in a similar car. Scottish driver Keith Rabatton is fast between accidents. And then it's the Group M leader, William Carroll. And of course, Wexford produces hurling champions at all levels. slow on the first one all right and I was we're always a bit nervous starting your home event but it's settled in after the after the first one so we I think we were equal with him on the second and we banged by three seconds on the third one. Uh, the only problems I've got is that the spare gearbox that we're running the um, centre diff's loose so it's tending to lock the rear wheel so I have to be very careful when I brake. Things are not going according to plan for the Wexford man on the second run through time on Eamon drops another seven seconds to the visitor. Doughty has had to make do with the five-speed gearbox as compared to the seven-speed in Boland's car. Fowden is off the pace as his escort keeps cutting out and Gwinda has a coil lead come loose. Derek Smith is the benefactor. PJ McGrath is the second highest place of the local crews and Graham Dale is chasing William Carroll for the Group N honours. No, this is not Ari Vatman but Melvin Evans. But he's driving like Ari, he's in fifth place. Jonathan Wilhelm pushes his RS2000 to the limit. As does John Rooney in his G3 Escort. But Trevor Martin pushes his rare Mark 1 a little too hard. Here we see the English driver's problems in slow motion. Fortunately, no real damage done, as Trevor is lucky to select a soft bit of County Wexford. And so it's on to this tricky hairpin on Adamstown stage. Although Eamon seems to waste time getting out of the tight spot, he pulls two seconds back on his rival. Pete Cosworth also dies in the hairpin, but the Nottingham driver is now 14 seconds clear of Boland. Fowden finds that his car is running normally at high temperatures, but the Welshman has lost a lot of time. That coiled problem caused 
Ross Winder, 30 seconds. And he now trails Derek Smith by 16. And the very fired up Wicklow driver is not going to be easy to catch. No change at number 11. Lloyd is maintaining his ninth position. As is Melvin. In a fabulous fifth place. Doesn't this bring back memories? Now for the less fortunate on the second run through Adamstown. John and Tony Sheehan get a little over exuberant, but the Waterford brothers still have a chance of second place in the southwestern stages. This unknown soldier is also in a spot of bother. The Hertfordshire crew and the Cleo Williams are being caught, or have they just overtaken Alan Williams Songby? Poor Chris Simmons, he could do with a little more air. Pete and Joe Johnson ask their Astra to do a little more than can be expected of it, as does Nigel Pugh in his Peugeot. Colin Dodd in the classic Mark II gets the tail wagging. But Tim Steele and Trevor Toner, ears muttering news class leaders, have their problems. Here's another catch-up situation. Pat Bulger's Skoda is closely followed by Sean Price's Chevette. Brian Newport, and uh, they went the other way. I said the other way, Nigel Malloy. By the end of the first day on the Talbot Hotel Wexford Rally, Eamon Boland has narrowed the gap to 10 seconds. The Wexford driver is the first to acknowledge that the English visitor has been quite a revolution. They may be three minutes behind the leaders, but these two are having a ball in the fight for third place. Only 19 seconds separate them. Barton lets PJ through. The Lancashire lads Cosworth is still overheating. David James is seventh overnight. And that man with the Batman touch, he's fifth. John and Tom Sheehan have made it into the top ten, and now for the jigs and the reels. The Cleo lifts a leg in fine river dance style. Andrew Jones gives us a sidestep. Shane Byrne is in quite a flap. Brian Newport indulges in a bit of break dancing, but gets right out of control. And Porrick Burns throws in a pirouette. It's all too much. Time for tea at the Talbot. The battle for the lead will continue in the morning over the remaining nine stages. The Sunday tests, however, are faster and should suit the Hertz car and the seventh gearbox in the Malcolm Wilson built escort. Day two and Doughty leads on the road, with his advantage now down to six seconds. The pace, however, is telling on both the top escort Cosworth drivers, as they have indulged in wild overshoots on the 11.5 mile stage. Derek Smith continues to hold on to his highly impressive third place, but Gwyndorf has narrowed his advantage to four seconds. David James is looking as impressive as ever. He's in seventh place. And Keith Robertham is on a storming recovery drive and setting some very quick times. PJ is the epitome of consistency. But the little Davrian is hounding him, if you'll pardon the visual pun. Now for the bombshell. Throughout the second day, Doughty had been under a threat from Boland in one of the most thrilling battles ever witnessed in the 25-year history of the Wexford Rally. After 12 stages, only four seconds separated the two rivals. But on unlucky stage 13, the turbo goes on the Hertz car, and with it, two minutes of unrecoverable time. It's all over by the shouting, but at least both men are continuing to try. Derek is investing in his third position as mechanics have changed the head gasket and gearbox, and he's opening up a reasonable gap over his Welsh rival. Sadly, we would shortly say goodbye to the Vathman. Mervyn Evans will retire. Lloyd is one to benefit from Mervyn's departure, but he is unhappy with the sundry pace. Didn't look bad there. David Evans has moved up in his escort also. And the Sheehan brothers are now in 10th place. 
And here's the man that has confused the seating committee, Stephen Flack. He's in 12th place in number 63. Pete Doughty and Lynn Jenkins continue to enjoy themselves, as you can see from the front of the DPE escort. As they trade times with the Hertz car, Derek is enjoying every second of his epic drive. He's now nearly 50 seconds clear of Gwinda. And Gareth Lloyd, he has to be the entertainer of the weekend. And the wild men are not confined to the top ten. Tim Steele and John Bennett in their Astra. Roy White and Des Cooney, who is definitely not camera shy. Gary Fincher plays the gentleman to Shea White. And Gordon Webster is heading for another class win with Damien Cole in close attendance. And so to the final countdown, it's been Pete Doughty and Lynn Jenkins' weekend, and what an addition they are going to make to the 1997 Tarmac Challenge of Entries. Just when it looked as if Eamon Boland and Damon Morrissey could have made it, the turbo blew. They have to settle for second. Surely Derek Smith and Dara Cafferty is the drive of the rally into third place. The Evans BDG engine developed a water leak in the final hours, but Gwinda nursed at home in fourth. Dennis Biggerstaff and Ian Porter are a fine fifth, their first major rally success. The ever spectacular Gareth Loy that is seventh and Graham Dale finishes second in Group N to William Carroll. Paul Chapman and Stuart Powell finish in 12th spot, followed by Mark Williams and Alan Davis, who are class winners in their escort. And then it's the crazy Chris Simmons. And John Lacey and Paddy Lockman in another of the popular G3 escorts. salute the Wexford winners who finish off their Ears Motoring News Championship campaign in fine style. And we look forward to seeing the Nottingham driver on the Irish tarmac stages in 1997 as he has announced his intention to contest our Premier Championship. That has to be good news.